every time we've set our objectives for the next 12 months, we've actually, you know, we've done what we, we wanted to achieve, but we've done it a little bit more slowly than we thought we'd do over the next 12 months. But then if you step back and think, well, what did we think we'd achieve four years ago over this four-year period, I think we've, we've exceeded all expectations. 2008, there was a big sort of discussion within IFC about um, two or three things that were all happening at the same time. Uh, first of all, there was the financial crisis. So one big set of issues was what is IFC's response to the financial crisis? And one of the ideas that uh, was hatched at that time was the idea of setting up a uh, capitalization fund to invest tier one and tier two capital in all these commercial banks that clearly were suffering as a result of the financial crisis. And you know, the, 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 the thesis behind the cap fund has evolved and developed and become much more sort of uh, refined over the years, but I think the initial idea was very simple, which is these banks are gonna need more capital you know, let's see if we can raise a big fund, um, prompted also by the fact that JVIC were particularly interested in this and in the conversation that they had with, with Lars Janel, who most of you know, but those who are new, he was Jin Yong's predecessor as the, the CEO of, of IFC. At the time of standing start, we're now managing $5.2 billion, uh, which, by the way, means that in terms of fund managers who focus on emerging markets, that already, already puts us as probably the third largest in the world. And actually, within two or three years, we might even be the largest. And I think we should all be you know, extremely proud of that. I mean, that in itself is something where, and if you speak to people who are kind of on the outside, sort of looking in at what IMC is doing generally, um, you know, they, you know, that is something which people are extremely impressed by. And if you just look at the total, you know, last year, the total, total, total capital raised for private equity in emerging markets was, was $20 billion. In terms of what is part of the kind of ab initio strategy is very much covering the IFC waterfront. So we started with a particular sector and a particular uh, two regions. Um, there's no reason why over time we won't cover every region that IFC invests in and every sector. Now we may, we don't necessarily, we won't have a fund for every sector, we won't necessarily have a fund for every region, but there we should get to the point within the next two or three years where any equity investment of size that IFC is looking at should fit at least one of our funds, okay? And there may be one or two little things here and there that don't, but generally speaking, you know, what we're doing so far is really only covering about half of what IFC does, okay? The good news from an AMC perspective is that it's now the other half of IFC that's complaining that there isn't an AMC fund that supports their business, which is, by the way, a big triumph because to begin with, you can imagine that a lot of issues that some of the, of the initial sort of teams on both the CAD fund and the ALAC fund had to deal with is kind of like uh, an, an IFC investment officer or investment department thinking you know, you guys are just going to get in the way, you're going to be pain in the neck, uh, it's, going to be, it's going to be complicated, how am I going to explain this to the client, um, and so on and so forth. And some of those were some of the tricky conversations early on, and then gradually over time, the investment departments have realized what an enormous benefit having an AMC fund that sits alongside their core business um, provides. I'm going to cover two things. I'm going to touch a little bit on just the overview of kind of what Selena, Farah and I kind of get up to on a daily basis so you can get a sense of kind of, you know, what are we doing and what's it driving towards. And then also I was asked maybe just to have what I think will be a very quick uh, flip through the kind of standard presentation and I'm not going to deliver it all. I mean, it is still quite a tricky fundraising environment where we're very lucky though in kind of what it is we're selling. I mean, for, for for a couple of reasons. First of all, emerging markets and emerging market private equity are, you know, very much kind of in fashion. People are very interested in it. Obviously, they're the high growth economies. People are making good returns there. People don't know generally how to get into those markets, especially on the private market side. Obviously, people increasingly understand the, the listed side. But on the private market side and private equity side, you know, no one, no one is actually better at it than IFC. So people in the outside world, institutional investors, are increasingly interested for all the reasons we know very well. There aren't very many players to go with. 
and IFC is one of the premier players, however you, however you measure that. You know, at some point around probably the year kind of three, four, five, even though you may, may not have had many exits yet, investors are starting to compare where you are on your valuations of your fund against what they expect and what they see from other fund managers that have, you know, a, a projected path that has in the end yielded, you know, 18, 20, 25% IRRs really. <laughs> But um, I'd like to end by saying that we are really uh, creating something quite, quite special here. Um, you know, obviously we want to do a good job in terms of all the nuts and bolts and share best practice, etc. But just stepping back and thinking in terms of big picture here, this is a totally unique endeavor that we are embarked upon here. I, I don't think there is actually uh, a corporation 
that is 100% owned by a multilateral. So I think, you know, just from a legal or constitutional perspective, I think, you know, we are doing something quite special here. Um, I frequently uh, get asked by people at ADB, EBRD, IDB, the UN, whatever, others on multilaterals, you know, how we did it, should they do something similar, what are the pros and cons, how is it working, etc. So we really are trailblazing. Right?